when that diver sued him for slander because he called the guy a pedophile. Wait, 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 wait remind us what that story was. Oh my gosh, Jeez, there's just so much going on in Tesla world that I don't. I have to. <laughs> okay, so let me get a timeline for you. Okay. So Tesla bought Solar City in 2017 officially. My story about these faulty connectors came out in 2019. Just to get the the timeline straight, in the summer of 2018, remember those Thai kids got stuck in a cave. And Elon said that uh, he was going to, right? Um, he was going to send little mini submarines in. It <laughs> looked ridiculous. And this guy, the, this royal, English royal, you know, royal accolade, you know, British government toot toot uh, diver saved the kids. And then afterwards, right. said that Elon Musk's idea was stupid. And then Elon went on a Twitter tirade and called the guy a pedophile and wouldn't recant. Then the guy sued him and somehow Elon won that lawsuit. So it, it's just like this guy really always skirts the line. He lied about taking his company private for $420 a share in 2018. Yeah, he just, he just does stuff and gets away with it. So he just keeps doing stuff. And I think, you know, when you give a moose a muffin, it's going to ask for a glass of milk, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just going to do more and more and more. So Elon's always doing the most. Okay. And uh, his shareholders settled for $60 million. Insurance paid that out and then said goodbye. So the board of Tesla is no longer insured for legal issues. Um, so Elon stepped up and he's insuring them personally, which is a crazy conflict of interest. Um, how are you going to say anything against the man who is paying your legal bills? But, you know, um, the SEC is not the most active these days. Um, and he he seems to not have a problem getting them to to say yes to whatever he says. I mean, look, he opened the Tesla factory in Alameda County early, despite the coronavirus. California is having a second surge. It is a massive factory, 10,000 employees. And he didn't care. And he's still yeah. on Twitter fighting with epidemiologists. Yeah after he said that America wouldn't have a problem by the end of April. This is just lunacy. So anyway, I hope that wasn't too much. No, this around. is, this is, it's, it's, I think it's really fascinating because, you know, from the political perspective, he's come out with a, he has a very clear perspective on, on politics and science, uh, and, you know, COVID <laughs> being the, the perfect case. But it overlaps, I mean, it's clearly business oriented, and it overlaps with exactly what you're saying. He's disregarding science, he's disregarding facts, he's disregarding, he's taking extraordinary risks, um, all which are ultimately hurting people. So it's actually the same. I mean, if you're continuing to operate as if, first off, lying, straight up lying to your shareholders about a product that works when it doesn't even work, it doesn't even function yet, and then they're forced by by pressure, essentially, um, and, and leverage to buy out that company. I mean, it's just, this is like, this is cuckoo town. It's, it's cuckoo town. <laughs> and, you know, the Buffalo plant? Oh, yeah. That's supposed to be making all the solar panels. They're not really doing much over there. So, all right, so that's a solar panel. <laughs> What's going on with Tesla? Because, you know, I, I listened, I painfully listened to the last Joe Rogan interview with Elon Musk. It was hard. Um, Joe Rogan <laughs> loves Elon Musk. Let's just say that. Praises him, says yeah. he's genius. He makes great products. And I don't know how many times he said, man, you just make great products. And, like, they got really nerdy about cars and going to space and just, and, you know, on another planet. Um, please, go to Mars. Because <laughs> that's... <laughs> Because that's where your no, head is. No uh, one is stopping you. No one's stopping you. You go on your own on one of your, you, you test time. out that. But he, um, you know, I, I just, it, it, I, I'm, I'm shocked by how many people say his products are really great. Like they're built great. And this story is mind blowing. Uh, the fact that he could know and consciously keep producing these cars, knowing internally in the company that he could be killing and risking people's lives um, 
Can you explain a little bit like how this came about and where the investigation is right now? Yeah, this is my second story uh, that I said, you know, I, that I think really is emblematic of Tesla this year. Um, and I published this one recently. In 2012, when Tesla was delivering its first Model S's, which is, you know, the luxury sedan um, that, that Tesla designed, Tesla knew that the cooling system of the battery was faulty. And it was faulty such that there could be leaks. And those leaks would leak a coolant into the battery that would either cause the battery to just stop, like brick, you're driving along, coolant leaks into the battery, boop, boop, boop car's dead. Or um, the coolant could not brick the battery and leave a residue, and that residue is flammable. So it could be lead, lead to a fire. Um, I have been reporting the story for almost two years because while I did have documentation and I had a single source, it was very difficult to get people inside the company to talk about this situation because this is a design flaw. So while not every single part will have this issue, every single part could have this issue. So they realized that this was a design flaw starting in the spring of 2012. They had the part tested by two third party, uh, third party metallurgic and consulting firms. Um, both firms were like, this is not gonna fly, it's a design problem. Tesla went ahead and pushed the car through anyway, selling the car to customers because they were behind schedule. And even as the customers were rolling out of the factory, I was seeing emails as late as December 2012 saying, look, the part is leaking on the, on the conveyor belt, in the assembly line, it's leaking. And uh, this is a very costly thing that happens to Tesla because Tesla, they kind of do their design and engineering process all in one jumble where Traditional automakers would come up with a plan. They would test every single part. Every single part would be stress tested. Then they would do a test run of manufacturing. And then after that test run went perfectly, they would start making cars en masse. Tesla doesn't do that. It all happens at once. The designing, the engineering, everything. And so there are mistakes. Um, I've reported on other mistakes before. There's been a mistake with uh, the alignment called the Wompy Wheel Problem where sometimes wheels in the Model S would, fall, got, would go out of alignment and then a wheel would just kind of fly off the car. I mean, these are known issues. Wow. And the problem is that Tesla is supposed to report these issues to um, the NHTSA, um, which is the agency that sort of oversees them, um, but they don't. So my last story about the battery um, spurred an NHTSA investigation, they're going to start looking into it because it's something that when Tesla knew about it, they would have had to let the NHTSA know within five days because this is something that would require a recall. Um, the issue now is that Tesla has a new car, new model that it's selling called the Model Y. And you would think that eight years later, they would figure out how to figure, how to finesse the manufacturing process especially since the Model Y is just a slightly bigger version of their last car, the Model 3. Uh, so, you know, Elon was talking big game, like this manufacturing process is going to be easy. We're going to get this one right. But as the Model Y is being delivered, we're seeing customers freak out because there are missing seat belts. There are back seats that aren't put together correctly. The paint is shoddy. And those are the problems that you can see. So the question is, what are the problems that you can't see? And the battery issue was a problem that you could not see, but extremely material. So um, to me, the question is, when is Tesla going to change? When are they going to care about safety? When are they going to care about the customers? When are they going to care about getting the manufacturing process right? Um, you know, it isn't just dangerous for the people who are inside of Tesla. It's dangerous for the people that are driving behind them. The thing that he calls autopilot is not an autopilot. It, people overuse it. Um, it is guided assistance 
just like you would get in a BMW or any other right. car that has. So the way that he markets these products, it's just not, it's not reality. And because he has such an extremely loyal, almost religious fan base who believe that he can do no wrong, mm -hmm. they say, well, autopilot's not perfect, but everyone knows that. Like, blah, blah, blah. Tell that to the, to the gentleman who died in Mountain View, California, because his car kept, his autopilot was faulty and autopilot, and it kept swerving him into, uh, into a divider in, in, uh, in the highway. And finally, one day he couldn't move the car quickly enough and crashed and died tell that to to people who have, are really really i mean i'm consistently shocked by the number of uh accidents and fires that uh people see and still tolerate and the defects that people have in their own teslas and say i love the car i love the car it's a perfect car but um so there's a bit of cognitive dis dissonance there from the elon fans they're the first people to tell you that he is the greatest, he's a genius, blah, blah, blah. And when they get the car, you have a good 30-minute conversation with them. And you find that it's in the shop a lot. The insurance is really high because insurers understand that these cars are not a Toyota. It's not reliable. Um, and so once you start talking to people for a little while, the whole this is a perfect car thing starts to break down and you see that they're just kind of glossing over these problems because they really believe in the mission so much. Right. It's interesting. So like, okay, they were conscious of, of, of the fact that there was this problem and they did nothing. I mean, that I think is what is critical here is companies, I mean, car companies regularly have issues with defects, but they immediately have to do recalls. They have, you know, to take the car in. Toyota, remember, uh, you know, there were lots of issues with the Priuses a few years ago. Um, this is common, but whether the big question is whether they were conscious of it before, before it became a problem. So what could potentially happen to Tesla if some oversight agency or someone sues them, frankly, for wrongful death if they're not already doing so? Um, is there any sort of accountability? Like, uh, where does this end if it I, were to go I right don't... with justice? I, I think that Tesla would have to issue a recall. Thank you for watching and listening to the Nomi Key Show. Make sure to click like and subscribe on YouTube and share with everybody on social media. And of course, if you're not a patron already, please join us on patreon.com slash the Nomi Key Show for as low as $5 a month. That money makes a huge difference. We don't have the corporate money coming in. We're not uh, cable news that's raking in the dough from, from advertisers right now as everybody's sitting at home and watching. It is really you guys who are keeping us together. So please consider being a patron. And for those of you who have already, we are incredibly grateful to you.